Capcom vs. SNK2 is, in my opinion, the ultimate celebration of the fighting game crossover. Many of the stages in this game exude a joyful, energetic mood that underscores the celebratory tone of such an unusual crossover. That's not to say that this game doesn't have any quiet or peaceful stages, but most of the stages in the game consist of large crowds of people and a bump and soundtrack. The stage that exemplifies this concept more than any others is, in my opinion, the Mori Nabuta Matsuri stage. To break it down, Amori is a city in northern mainland Japan, well known for their volcanic mountain ranges and apples. The word Nabuta refers to a giant lantern, though there are many competing theories as to the exact origin of the word. And finally, Mitsuri, meaning celebration. In other words, a stage brimming with the laughter and atmosphere that you would find at one of Japan's largest summer festivals. The festival typically takes place August 2nd through 7th, and is most well known for the assortment of colorful floats that parade down the streets during this almost week-long celebration. The floats are carried through the city for a number of evenings, and on the last day, August 7th, the floats are carried in the daytime until night, where finally a select few are carried out to sea and accompanied by stunning fireworks. In addition to the floats, dancers wearing colorful Haneto costumes yell out to the crowd to join in on the fun. Zooming in on the stage itself, in the background we can see various floats scattered in the distance. In real life, the floats themselves are made from a bamboo and metal wiring as the frame, which are then covered in white paper and painted. This process usually takes about an entire year to prepare. The floats are carried on wooden poles and are typically held up by large numbers of volunteers. Typical floats depict figures from Japanese legends, historical figures, kabuki actors, and local personalities. In the game, the floats look purposely polygonal, since this replicates the process of how these floats would look in real life. From a more technical standpoint, this stage excellently blends 3D and 2D assets. The 3D is used as the floats rotate and bump up and down, as if hoisted by real people underneath all throughout the battle. The highway to the left of the stage shows motion as various street lamps pass by. This actually indicates that the playable fighters themselves are fighting on a float. However, for obvious gameplay reasons, the floor can't bounce up and down. Looking more closely at the floats themselves, we see that they're lit up in an orange hue which contrasts against the night sky. While low to the ground, there is still a significant distance to the ground when compared to the parade of people in the background. There are certainly some taller floats off in the distance, giving the illusion of an endless string of floats. This stage also has many references to Capcom and SNK littered in the background as well. The floats themselves are modeled after Samurai Showdown main character and poster boy Hoamaru, as well as Street Fighter 2's E Honda. Contrary to E Honda's usual appearance, his facial markings, clothing, and weapon, which is most likely a bow, are markedly different than normal. Further into the background, you can see another Samurai Showdown character, the Kabuki warrior known as Kyoshiro. Another character also makes a quick appearance, the Dark Stalkers character Bishimon who is an oni, or a demon, of a samurai wearing possessed armor. Even further tucked away is another samurai showdown character uniquely named Nicotine Caffeine. All of the characters used as floats are all from Japan, which is a nice touch. Another potential cameo, though it's tough to say, may be Gore Daimon, who's banging away on the taiko drums. Though I can't get into music theory, this stage's song, fitting with the background, is a high-energy, high-strung piece with an instrument similar to a shamisen accompanying the melody and vocalizations. While not the most well-known of the stages in Capcom vs SNK 2, to me this stage perfectly encapsulates the energy I feel while playing this amazing game. The crowd cheering alongside you as you duke it out, the consistent tension of the music, and the multiple clever references to other series all testify to the hard work and dedication of the developers. I've played the stage countless times and it never really gets old. The lights, the scenery, the floats themselves locked in a never-ending battle to the very end.
There are hundreds of other stages like this where I would love to break down the references and cameos as well as the cultural significance of these environments. So like, rate, and subscribe if you want to see more of that. There's a lot of fighting game stages out there, so I doubt I'll ever run out of material. I really enjoy talking about these stages because it sets the literal stage of the match. In my opinion, it's almost as important as the characters you pick. Anyways, thanks for watching.